Vampires, magic, dragons, lies, and misinformation. Your fantasy book fix. Blood Red Eyes, book one. Trials, a fast-paced, easy read on diving into act utilitarianism and solutions to nihilism from different perspectives. This young adult medieval dark epic fantasy book is available at Barnes & Noble and is free for Kindle Unlimited members on Amazon. Take advantage of a week-long ebook sale starting on October 20th at 62% discount, celebrating this sponsorship. Blood Red Eyes, Book 1, Trials. Available now. Hey everybody, welcome to the Dungeon Cast. I'm Brian. And I'm Will. This is the podcast where we talk about everything Dungeons & Dragons. And today we're talking about Dullahan's and Death's Heads. <laughs> Hey, Brian. Hey, Will. How are you doing today? I'm fantastic. I'm spooky. The spirits <laughs> are manifesting. Yeah, in are they? The podcast, prob that's, probably. That sounds worrisome. Uh, no, because they're dull hands and death heads. Oh, that's very, very fucking worry worrisome then. Oh, you don't want them here. You definitely don't want these guys around. We want the spirit of their lore here. Yes, That's absolutely. what we want. That's yes. what we're bringing to In the table. In order to better ward them off. We did the spirit bard, and now we can be spirit bard, because yeah. we know how. We are halfway through the spooky month. Um, real quick, before we get into today's topic, I just want to remind everyone, we are running contests on the social media where we are giving away coffee. So check out our Twitter, check out Instagram, and, and get your Adventurers Company coffee. Yep. Um, and without further ado, let's get into, into it. I would so, like that. Today we are talking about two new horrors from Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft. Uh, the Dullahan, or Dullahan, or Dullahan, or Dullahan. I don't know how you say it, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to say Dullahan. He said, I was saying Dullahan, and I know that's probably wrong. But it just uh, said the Dullahan. It sounds like a pirate, and a it pirate, does. I, I want to say Dullahan. Okay. The Dullahan and the Death's Heads. Um, one has no head and the other is a head. Wait a minute. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> also, they have some relation in the game itself. I have to say thank you to Wizards of the Coast for the new Ravenloft book. Spooky monsters were running thin for us to cover. Uh, and bam, this book drops and supply, uh, sup and supplies stop. It's, it's got so much stuff in it. It it's does. Got it's got so much stuff. Uh, it supplies topics for pretty much the entire month. And it's uh, been pretty wide and varied. We got class options, race options, monsters. Uh, another fun thing about today's two topics is both have ties to cultural folklore, which it's been well established. I'm a fan on of this show. Um, I'm a fan of on this show. The dual hand is based off of the Irish folklore entity of the same name and is probably most recognized in the United States as... The Headless Horseman. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm st Now I'm even more willing to bet it's the Dullahan. Oh, why? What, what makes you think uh, that? It's Irish stuff. Oh, okay. For sure. Is it that a specific pronunciation that you recognize? Yeah, I don't know. It just sounds like an it, Irish word when you say it like right. that. Maybe, okay. du maybe du 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 Dullahan. Dullahan? I, I don't get, know. Maybe. We're back. We're, we're square one. Let's Indeed. just keep going. We're back to square <laughs> one. The Death's Head, though, is likely somewhat based off of a cannibalistic spirit in both Iroquois and Wyandot or Wyandot mythology known as a flying head. That being said, let's get into it, starting with the Dullahan. The Iroquois and the Wyandot are uh, Native American cultures, right? Yes, okay. in the northeastern region of the United States. Okay. Uh, Dullahans are headless undead warriors, the reigns of villains who let vengeance consume them. Mm. Uh, these decapitated hunters haunt the areas where they were slain, butchering innocents in search of their severed heads or simply to quench their thirst for revenge. Uh, the story of the Dullahan comes from Ireland. Uh, he is depicted as a headless rider on a black horse who carries his own head held high in his hand. Uh, usually the Dullahan is male, but there are some female versions. It is said to be the embodiment of the Celtic god. <sighs> I apologize for my pronunciation. Crom dub. <laughs> it, yeah, it's uh, Crom dub or Crom dub? Crom dub. Crom dub. Uh, whose Dubba, name huh. means dark, crooked one. Oh, I mm -hmm. like that. I, I know, it's very Can very you just cool. imagine riding a horse with your own head in your hand? Like, mm -hmm. yeah! And but then it they... wouldn't be, I didn't yaw from here, I yawed from up there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, exactly. Um, the Dullahan of folklore seem to carry their own heads around with them. Uh, the mouth is usually in a hideous grin that touches both sides of its head. Uh, its eyes are constantly moving about and can see across the countryside even during the darkest nights. The flesh of the head is said to have the color and consistency of moldy cheese. Oh, that's delicious. Very gross. Uh, everybody who loves blue cheese out there can get yeah. this. Now, you you said them. Are there going to be multiples of these guys? So, uh, you know, just, uh, a lot of times when folklore entities get brought over to D&D, in the folklore themselves, it's usually the singular. You know, the Yeti. The Bigfoot. Right. You go to a Dula town Han. and a town is like, there is a monster unique, 
out yeah, there. Exactly. But when it gets transferred to D&D, the world of fantasy and magic is like, no, 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 no. This is a species. Yeah. Like, there is a monster out there, mm-hmm. but also... There's like, more of There them. might be, like, five. Yeah, I don't know. Exactly. So it could be, like, a pack of Dullahan. No, <laughs> I don't know about a pack of Dullahan. That would be terrifying. Like, think okay, about it, They, though, they like do a... seem to operate uh, solo. But I do like the idea, because, okay, so... In Ichabod Crane, uh, the Headless Horseman, the idea is that the the Headless Horseman fell in battle in the Revolutionary War. See, it, that's it, weird because it's Irish folklore. Well, you got to remember, like, all a lot of the immigrants that came over came came from Ireland and England and Wales and all that. Yeah, so I was thinking, like, that story of Sleepy Hollow, wasn't that set in, like, a colonial set? Yes, it is. Yeah, so like, I was like, it, oh, wow, It's Irish. a transfer of the doula. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense that it came with the culture, but mm-hmm. the, the popularized story that we know is, like... An American version of it. Yeah, it, it has yeah. Johnny Depp in it. I love that movie, by it's the way. It's so good. It's a very good movie. <laughs> it's Christopher Walken. <laughs> it's amazing. He's so awesome. His teeth are filed. Um, Holy shit. I got it's a, amazing. It's, I got, a, it's a very, very good. It's in, it's, it's in my top ten movies. I'm not even joking here. I got an argument with Tom about two weeks ago because he was saying we needed a Tom remake. Tom, from the Everything You Need to Know podcast. Exactly. The podcast that you and Tom do. Yes, indeed. Uh, for Oh, no. It's uh, Dude, Could You Imagine? Everything, oh, right, everything You he, Need to Know is a thing and, we do. And he edits it. <laughs> so yes. he is related to that show. Tom is part of the squad. Indeed. But me, Tom was saying that he thinks there should definitely be a remake because it's been too long. It was like, no, you don't remake that. That's a masterpiece. Don't touch it. I think we're good on that one. It could it would probably do for a remake in like, I don't know, maybe the earliest 10 years from now. Yeah, I, I, I can get behind when that. those actors are not like but, relevant anymore. You sure, know? absolutely. But um, back to your pack of doula hans, I could see what <laughs> if, what if um, a whole squad, smoke, a whole squad. One of these doula hans. <laughs> Ah, that's my favorite blend of tobacco. <laughs> um, if all squad goes down uh-huh. and they want, if if they are unanimous in their desire for vengeance, perhaps they all rise as Dolahans. That, that, yeah, yeah, like a like a um, a battalion, a right? battalion yeah. of headless horsemen. Yeah, that's good. Anyways, back to Dolahans. Okay, the Dolahan or Dolahan. <sighs> I'm gonna just keep saying Doolahan, and I'll just hear about it in the comments. You kind of were saying Doolahan. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, that's what my brain goes to. So just everyone, get in the comments and tell me I'm wrong. Uh, the the Doolahan is believed to use the spine of a human corpse for a whip, uh-huh. and its wagon is adorned with funeral objects. Whoa! It cool. has candles in skulls to light the way. The spokes of the wheels are made from thigh bones, and the wagon's covering is made from a worm chewn pall or dried human skin. Ugh. This thing's metal this is, is fuck. This is awesome. Say, Irish folklore is metal is fuck. I, it I has a it. cart at all. It's like news to me. <laughs> That's exactly. awesome. Again, this is the Irish folklore version. Like, obviously, you can home. Oh, not the D&D D&D version. No, you can homebrew your D&D version. Mine does. Yeah. Let me tell you that right oh, now. Oh, it's like a human, <laughs> a human spine for a whip. Like, that's ridiculous. That's a little, that's that's a little much even for this game. I know. We got <laughs> demon lords and shit. <laughs> the ancient Irish believe that where the dual hand stops writing, a person is due to die. Probably because the dual hand's going to kill them. The dual <laughs> <laughs> That's the implication. The dual hand calls out the person's name, drawing away the soul of his victim, at which point the person immediately drops dead. <laughs> Damn, there's no defense. <laughs> this is good. Uh, there are rumors that golden objects can force the dual hand to disappear. All right, there's your defense. I love that. That's yeah. so cool. You always want a weakness, right? Yeah. You always want a weakness. Fuck all that silver stuff. And, like, I've seen what you guys are talking about in the threads. You know, I've been what? talking about Reddit threads lately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, now they're talking about werewolves can't take fall damage because it's not sil- if, unless oh, silver. Unless silver is involved. Oh, fucking God. <laughs> stupid. Anyway, back to D&D lore. It's not. It's what it says. I... I don't know. I'll have to look into it. <laughs> okay. Back to D&D lore. Wicked knights or commanders in life, Dolahans adhere to twisted codes of chivalry or soldiership. These fallen champions consider a specific location their battlefield. This gives rise to stories of haunted battlegrounds, ruins, roads, river crossings, and other strategic locations where Dolahan continues a terrifying campaign against the living. In death, Dual hands are often rejoined by those who follow them in life. Yeah. Either in the form of lesser undead, like skeletons or whites, or terrifying mounts, like war or skeletons <laughs> or nightmares. Now, okay, that I makes sense it, when it's everyone. like the commander's the dual hand and his underlings are like the lesser undead. But if it's a band of if it's a band of like equal mercenaries, they're all dual hands. Deal with it. The leader's always gonna be Christopher Walken for me. Yes, absolutely. Follow me into battle to, to kill the townsfolk. 
<laughs> Absolutely. It's like Christopher Walken. Everybody. Absolutely. Is it good? Um, Let me know. Yeah, I thought it was pretty good. Okay, okay cool. I, I, think I got a Stewie and a Christopher Walken on the show now. Nice. That I've revealed. Very nice. I got to save the good, really good stuff for uh, the, the campaign I'm going to DM. Right, right. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, dual hands are known for seeking their lost head. So, okay, so in D&D, they don't got a head. They don't got a head with them. They're looking for a head. Right, yeah. They're never going to find it because their head's gone. That makes sense because Christopher Walken is looking for, like, he takes your heads to to get ahead because he's missing his. That's like. The, but he gets his head in the end. He, right? get, he does. Really that's part of, like, the. Yeah, spoilers for Sleepy Hollow. Christopher like, Walken does get re right? Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, but that that's like. Scene. That's to get him. To go the fuck away. To go away. Because he's like, I just need to, my whole shit to yeah. go to hell. Someone give me my fucking head. head. Yeah. And, and it's the witch who's controlling him because she has his head. And he takes her. Yes, to, he does. He, he, he like throws her over his shoulder and just takes her to hell. Oh, it's well, great. He, first he like bites the shit out of her, I think. Oh, yes, yeah, nasty did. teeth. He, with the, the nasty teeth. That's a good movie. That's, That's going to be my Halloween watch. <laughs> Got to get a babysitter for that yeah, one. Yeah, I like that. Um, so yeah, back to dual eyes. Dual eyes are known for taking their losses, giving rise to regional uh, legends of headless hunters and endless searches. Uh, the dual hand legend table suggests dual hand hauntings that might be the stuff of local legends. I love tables. Yeah, uh, I didn't print this table out, so unfortunately we don't have that on hand. Do uh, you want to Google it while I read the uh, dual hand monster stat? Maybe, okay, I'll pull it up. See if you can find it. I'm going to go ahead and get into this. So dual hand is going to be medium undead. Uh, which seems strange because I oh it's always going to be on a horse pretty much not always but like it shows up on a horse so it should be like a horse is large right uh, horses are large yeah but but the Dulahan himself yeah is medium makes sense uh, and like I think you're going to put him on a nightmare probably or a yeah. skeletal horse what's that CR three uh, right. for the nightmare I think it's CR three or five one of the two one of those okay uh, it's got an armor class sixteen it's wearing breastplate so go ahead and uh, pluck that off if you're successful and sell it maybe or tailor it. Hit points is 135 or uh, 18 T8 plus 54. Uh, we got a speed of 30 feet. We got 18 strength, 14 dex, 16 con, 11 intelligence, 15 wisdom, and 16 charisma. This thing is stacked. So powerful character. This is very strong. Powerful character. Okay, uh, I have I have the Duel Hung Legends. It's just a D4. Do you want to go over it now? Or really? uh, wait till I'm done with this okay. block, and then that'll be a cool way to close it out. Yeah. Uh, so we got uh, saving throw is going to be a plus 7 to con saves. Uh, plus six perception. That's cool. He's looking for that he's head. Looking through, he's looking for that head. Through a pumpkin for and you. And that con just shows how goddamn resilient he is. I know. He's uh, resistant to cold, lightning, poison. He is immune to charmed. Makes sense. Frightened yeah. and poison. Uh, he's got true sight for 120 feet. That's insanity. His his theoretical eyes are so good. He's the Ghost Rider. <laughs> uh, passive perception is 16. Uh, he understands the languages he knew in life, or they knew in life. Uh, but cannot speak. You can see real good, though. <laughs> um, challenge rating 10. Okay, that's cool. Nice. Uh, with a proficiency bonus of 4. You're going to get headless summoning. Recharges after a short or long rest. If Dullahan is reduced to 0 HP, it doesn't die or fall unconscious. Instead, it regains 97 hit points. I, love that's, I wish that's what happened to me when I died. I know, right? <laughs> In addition, uh, in addition, it summons three death's heads, yep. one of each type, in occupied in an unoccupied spaces within five feet of it, so anywhere around it, pretty much. Uh, the death's heads are under the dull hand's control and act immediately after the dull hand in, in the initiative order. So, additionally, the dull hand can now use the options in the mythic action section, award a party an additional. Uh, 5,900 XP if you're doing that. Um, or 11,800 total mm. for defeating the Dolahan after it uses Headless Summoning. That's cool. This is, let, me, let me up my CR right. <laughs> immediately. Yes, absolutely. That's fun. That's like a cool uh, mini-boss mm. mechanic. Almost. Yes, it is. This is this is like... 4th edition? This is, they took 4th edition and 5th edition and slapped it together and it's fucking beautiful. Catch they have a beautiful on. child. Um, <laughs> so... Number one, yes, I love this whole feature, but and we're gonna get into it later. This guy has legendary actions and also this newer thing called mythic action actions, okay. which I'll explain when we get there. Okay, so the legendary resistance to a day, uh, and then unusual nature. The dull hand doesn't require air, food, drink, or sleep. Nice, undead as fuck. Yeah. Uh, multi attack. It's gonna get two attacks on that. One with a battle axe. Um, 
So a melee weapon attack plus eight to hit with a reach of five feet on one target. It's going to do eight or one D eight plus four slashing damage or nine one D ten plus four slashing damage if used with two hands. So if he's riding the horse, he can like come out over the side like a polo. Yeah. But if he's yeah. on foot, he probably yeah, exactly. Do hit it. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Um, Nice. It's gonna, also going to do 11 or 2d10 necrotic damage. Yeah. If the dull hand score is a critical uh, hit against the creature, the target must succeed on a DC 15 constitution saving throw or the dull hand cuts off the target's God head. Damn. It Bro. killed you right there. <laughs> this is a hardcore <laughs> stat block. I Almost as hardcore as the Irish folklore. This might be my favorite stat block we've ever read. Like I, it just, I love every facet of it. I know. It's got a lot of flavor here. The target dies if it can't survive without the lost head. I mean, yeah, yeah cool. Really. Uh, well, like, uh, not even a Warforged, right? No. So a creature that doesn't have or need a head has legendary actions. Instead takes an extra 27, 68 slashing damage. Uh, okay, so Fiery Skull, range spell attack, plus seven to hit, range 120 feet, one target. It's gonna be 14, 2d10, plus three fire damage. So he doesn't have a head, but he's able to conjure a Fire Skull and throw it at you. Yeah, this is like a giant. He's very much like the Ghost Rider in a lot of ways. I know, I've, I've, I've <laughs> yes. So legendary actions, you're gonna get three of those. It can do an attack. Um, so the Dull Hand makes one attack, not a multi-attack, just one regular attack. Uh, it's going to do a frightful presence that costs two actions. Each creature of the dull hand's choice within 30 feet of it must succeed on a DC 15 wisdom saving throw or become frightened of the dull hand until the end of the next turn. That's very, uh, very good. That seems like it should be there, and it is. Mm -hmm. Headhunt. It's going to be all three actions. The dull hand moves up to its speed without provoking opportunity attacks and makes one battle axe attack with advantage. If the attack hits, but is not a critical hit. The attack does an extra 27 or 68 necrotic Man, damage. This dude's brutal. Yeah, this dude's he, brutal. <laughs> he can go and get the, the yeah. person. Okay, so here, here's he's sick of your healer. He's just going to go cut off your healer's head. Yeah, he's like chopping people real good, and they're like getting back up. He's like, huh? Yeah. A true sights the fucking cleric in uh -huh. the back doing holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> I got again. Um, so now, now, uh, it, real, real quick, we are going to get into mythic actions. They're pretty simple. So mythic actions are just extra legendary actions that one a creature gets to take if certain um, parameters are met, which it'll state at the beginning of the mythic action. So go ahead. Uh, okay, so coordinated assault. Oh, should I read this a little first? You, should, you the, should read uh, the, the, the whole thing. thing. Yeah. If the Dull Hand's headless summoning trait is active, it can use the options below as legendary actions. There you coordinated go. Coordinated assault. The Dull Hand makes a battle axe attack and then one death's head the uh, the dull hand can see within 30 feet of it can use its reaction to make a melee attack. Now the headless wall <laughs> costs two <laughs> actions. Uh, an echoing shriek issues from the dull hand's headless. Oh, stuff. that's gross! Wow, that's disgusting. Just like <laughs> you know, it's got <laughs> just a little throat tissues. Can you do that again? Do that again. <laughs> that's so disgusting. Uh, I was picturing like sputtering. Go oh yeah, absolutely. It's just like you know, probably. Um, <laughs> Rotted over, so it's not like yeah, bloody, but that's yeah, it's disgusting. spitting. My God, <laughs> it's throat spit. Uh, each creature of the dull hand's choice within ten feet of it must make a DC fifteen wisdom saving throw. Each creature takes sixteen or three D ten psychic damage on a failed save, or half as much on a successful one. If one or more creature fails the saving throw, the dull hand gains ten temp HP. My God, this thing's brutal, man. This thing, yeah, I'm sorry, challenge rating ten seems too low for this bad boy. Far too low. This seems like a challenge rating thirteen to fifteen. Well, maybe it uh, it is low. because the the challenge rating is based off of just the Dullahan. With the Death's Heads, it goes up substantially. What does it go up to? Does it goes it up say? to whatever eleven thousand eight hundred XP's worth of challenge rating is. Yeah, but that has more to do with the fact of like you reward a lot more XP based off a of group. It's not that the challenge rating of the monster is any different. I actually think this monster is above a 10. If you ask me, it has legendary and mythic actions, plus it has a, a thing where it guarantees a group of death's heads to join it, and also it regains most of its hit points on death. It's got good AC, and it's already got pretty good hit points. So, yeah, yeah. its stats are really good. Yeah, oh. okay, what are you going to throw this at? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it a, a 14. Yeah, I'm. With, I'm. I think I'm settling on thirteen, mostly because I I like the idea of the headless horseman's challenge rating being the unlucky number thirteen. Oh, okay, sure. So I'm sticking it's thirteen with, because it's 13. spooky. Gets spooky. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And what's one challenge rating off? It's not really yeah, significant. It's, yeah, it's it's meaningless. It's like right. uh, war in baseball, which is a stat that like envelops an entire player. If a player is like point one war away from another player, it's meaningless. Oh, okay. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Uh, I thought it was card games. For a second, have you ever played War the card game with bicycle cards? 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, obviously. That's a great game. Everybody has. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Let's take a short rest. Okay. We've returned. Indeed we have. And it's time to talk about Death's Heads. So Death's Heads are pretty straightforward. Uh, a Death's Head is a disembodied flying head. The type of creature one of these grotesque undead originated from determines how it terrorizes its prey. A death's head that arises from a person or animal swoops down to rip apart victims with its gnashing teeth. <laughs> uh, one with the head of a monster like a Nothic or Medusa, though, retains a measure of the power it had in life and can befuddle the minds or petrify the bodies of its victims. Cool. Um, now, there is also a thing called a death's head tree. In Cursed Wilds, uh, grow death's head trees, awakened trees from which 2d6 death's heads dangle like foul fruit. Oh, <laughs> God he- damn, I yes. Know. The heads detach to protect the tree if it's threatened. Should the tree be destroyed, the heads scatter and plant themselves in unholy ground. A new death's head tree emerges from each planted head 1d12 months later. So this is just some type of weird undead flora that grows in unholy lands. I would love voicing the death's heads. Those oh, would be so much yeah. fun. I do like that idea of they all talk. It doesn't fall too far from the tree. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's amazing. It's good. Um, according to both Iroquois and Wyandotte mythology, flying heads are described as being ravenous spirits that are cursed with an insatiable hunger. The physical appearance of the flying head somewhat varies depending on the storyteller. However, it is generally described as resembling a human head with long dark hair. Terror terrible eyes and a large mouth filled with razor sharp fangs okay in some versions the flying head has a pair of bat wings jutting from each side of its cheek and bird-like talons other versions replace its bat wings with those of a bird in all instances they're described as being larger in size than that of the tallest man and possessing a hide that no weapon can penetrate am i getting this right it's just like basically a like head or skull with like wings coming off of it yeah okay. yeah like okay. uh like the avenged sevenfold uh logo right or like a biker tattoo <laughs> or like a biker tattoo yeah okay yes, i got you aren't they the same thing right i've seen them i like avenged sevenfold, i've seen one way. in a record store and i've seen one in a record store if you know okay what I mean. yeah i know okay. i know what you mean <clears throat> so according to folklore <clears throat> excuse me the flying head drove the original native inhabitants who lived in the area of the state of new york near the source of the hudson river in the Adirondack Mountains, away from the hunting grounds before the Europeans came. Okay. In the early 19th century, a Mohawk guide in the town of Lake Pleasant, New York, who called himself Captain Gill, claimed it was Lake Sacandaga yeah. where the legend took place. The tribe had their village on a hill that is now located behind the Hamilton County buildings. The name of the previous inhabitants. Yeah, this is very specific because these are real places, with real people, and this is real folklore. Yes. The name of the previous inhabitants has been lost to history, and the legend of the flying head ensured that every neighboring tribe steered clear for many years. The flying head legend survives, but the name of the tribe who invented it is gone. The hill where the unknown tribe's village is was located is considered to be cursed to this day. This sounds like a CPG Grey video that, like, yes, did it, it go does. well? It does, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> I'm glad that we're both fans of CGP Grey. Yeah, Have you been too. watching his latest videos? Uh, you know, I kind of fell off because oh, his podcast stopped. Man, he went then... on a rant. Uh, he went down a deep rabbit hole of finding the origin of the name Tiffany, and it was amazing. I should catch up on my CPG Grey. Absolutely. Shout you should. out but to CPG But first, Grey. you should read this Death's Head. Before um, I watch any YouTube log. videos, I'm going to read the Death's Head How about we log. make I'm gonna a YouTube video? I'm going to finish making the YouTube video here. <laughs> Actually, I'll finish it later because that's how uh, post-production works. Indeed. (laughs) Um, Okay. So Death's Head is a tiny undead with an armor class of 16. It's a a strong head. It's better than a whole dude wearing breastplate (laughs) or just as good anyway. Just as good. I would say it's better because they don't have to wear armor, but they are tiny. I think that armor comes from the fact that they're so small they're hard to hit. Small. Yeah. 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 Natural armor, which means I can just fly out of the fucking way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I can see why. Here we go. So hit points are going to be 17 or 5d4 plus 5. That's pretty low. They can't walk. Sorry. (laughs) <laughs> Maybe they could like wing, like kind of. That's not. That's basically zero. Yeah. Uh, fly speed is thirty <clears throat> feet. It's hovering speed. So mm-hmm. they can't like. Oh, what's it in uh, Legend of Zelda? In Ocarina of Time. What? They're what? like the the flaming blue skulls that like come and like make your weapon undrawable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or whatever. Okay. Yeah, they're exactly like that. Yeah, they're that too. I'm gonna keep drawing uh, parallels to pop culture. So strength is eight, dex is thirteen, and that's the, the there it is with the, the AC. Con is twelve, intelligence five. <laughs> they're just ahead. They're just uh, ahead, but they're very wise. They're yeah. fourteen wisdom, and uh, they're quite aware. Very not charismatic with nope. a minus four. They uh, couldn't convince charisma. you to do anything. No, they will do the next stuff. I'm going to read. Uh, they have damage resistance to necrotic. Makes they sense. Have a passive perception of twelve. Uh, they don't speak, like we said. Uh, right. But they can in your game. Oh uh, yeah, if you want. Uh, 
so it's got a, that's a half challenge rating. So really, it, you're gonna add a uh, a hundred XP for these. So yeah, you're you're right about the XP being like a group reward sort of thing because that doesn't yeah. that math it, it <clears throat> don't track. No uh, it, proficiency bonus plus two. It's got a beheaded form when creature. Well, oh, sorry, when created, a death's head takes one of three forms: aberrant head, gnashing head, or petrifying head. Uh, this form determines the creature's attack. Uh, it also has unusual nature. The death's head doesn't require air, food, drink, or sleep. So I think uh, previous to to this book, as far as I know, um, usually that would just be undead nature. But I think they're just coming up with an umbrella term for anything that doesn't require air, food, or drink, or sleep. It's just because it comes from one of the many unusual natures for that, that would be a thing. Maybe yeah, it's not just maybe undead. It's undead. Yeah, yeah, so I was going to say, so like so an forth. elemental. Might yeah, or that. that as well. Yeah. Uh, okay. We got the gnashing bite for the gnashing head only. It's going to be a melee attack plus three to hit with a reach of five feet on one target. It can hit uh, for four or one d6 plus one piercing damage plus seven 2d6 necrotic damage. Pretty good. Uh, Mind bending bite for the aberrant head. Melee weapon attack is going to be plus three to hit, reach five feet on one target. Hit's going to be four or one d6 plus one piercing damage plus five 1d10 necrotic damage. And the target must succeed on a DC 10 intelligence saving throw, or it can't take a reaction until the end of its next turn. Moreover, on its next turn, the target must choose whether it gets a move, an action, or a bonus action. It gets only one of the three. That's mm-hmm. really good mm-hmm. to uh, mitigate action economy for, yeah. for a, a party. So petrifying bite uh, for the petrifying head only, mm-hmm. obviously. So it's going to be melee weapon attack plus three to hit, reach a five feet, one target. It's going to do only three instead of four, one D4 plus one piercing damage. And the target must succeed on a DC 10 constitution saving throw or be restrained as it begins to turn to stone. Dun, tar- dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. The, t- <laughs> the target must repeat the saving throw at the end of its next turn. On a success, the effect ends. On a <clears> failure, <throat> the target is petrified for 10 minutes. So, That's a lot of time in combat. Yeah, so at low levels, these things are, uh, they're deadly at, at the very low levels. But I think most importantly... The fucking Christopher Walken running around, though. When when <laughs> paired with the Headless Horseman or the Dullahan, they are a nuisance that cannot afford to be ignored. Because, yeah, you'll probably take them down in one hit, but you have to waste a turn doing it, and you're mm. fighting Christopher Walken. <laughs> Uh, (laughs) So, you know, that's a sacrifice right there. But if you try and forego them and ignore them, um, you know, there's three of them and two of them do this crazy shit where it fucks with either your action economy or turns you to stone. And all it takes is one flub and suddenly you're at a huge disadvantage. So you can't really afford to just ignore them. So basically it's three nuisances that the dual hand forces you to deal with, which buys him time to fuck up your life. Yeah, he was like, you are too distracted by my bets. And there's axes (laughs) in your back. Absolutely. <laughs> That's exactly how it should go. He starts to gnaw on your ear. Do you have any questions about Death's Heads or Dullahans? Um, <laughs> Dullahans. 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 How do we say it? Let us know in the comments below. Yeah. We love this game on the Dungeon Cast. Mm-hmm. Um, should we do some long rest stuff? We should do some long rest stuff. Okay. All right. Vampires, magic, dragons, lies, and misinformation. Your fantasy book fix. Blood Red Eyes, book one. Trials. A fast-paced, easy read on diving into act utilitarianism and solutions to nihilism from different perspectives. This young adult medieval dark epic fantasy book is available at Barnes & Noble and is free for Kindle Unlimited members on Amazon. Take advantage of a week-long ebook sale starting on October 20th at 62% discount, celebrating this sponsorship. Blood Red Eyes, book one, Trials. Available now. I'm Let's ready. fucking go. Hey, everybody. Welcome to The Long Rest. This one's <laughs> fucked up. We're building a <laughs> fucked up rest. We Just want to let you know up front that we're fucking, we're <laughs> fucking it up. We came up with some bad ideas. <laughs> They're happening. They're happening. Uh, <laughs> Tell them about it, Bray. I'm resigned to, to them, and I also love them. So we are going to start with the... No, we're going to start with the beam. Okay. Oh, yeah. we're building Beholder. We're in building case a Beholder. You didn't realize that. That's what we're doing this year. We're too deep. We're too deep. We're too deep. We're building uh, a beholder, and we're starting feature. with the beam. Go ahead, Brian. The beam shoots uh, death's heads that are gazer-themed. So gazer, beholder, yeah. beholder-themed death heads. Exactly. They exactly. know the cantrip may chance so they can help with science. Because yeah. after the hobble man did his good, good drawing with our horrible-eared beholder... It just does look like a floating head. Like it reminds, like it looks like a head. It shouldn't. It is that. Yeah, it, it is, is a that. flying head. It is. It uh, is. Anyway, um, I would say those they, those uh, gazer death's heads would fall under the aberrant head, so they would have the mind bending bite. 
Nice, yeah. They have the mind bending mm. bite, and they they're gonna bend your mind, baby. Indeed. So I'll tell you what's gonna bend your mind next, baby. It's the feature. Yeah. So the feature we decided, uh, you know what? Let's go with some uh, Irish folklore, and we're gonna give this thing the a the flesh of a Doolahan. So uh. the the flesh of a Doolahan <laughs> is said to have the color and consistency of moldy cheese. So this beholder has. The flesh that is the color and consistency of moldy cheese. It, uh, side effect, it has the worst fucking it's breath. It's so fucking disgusting. It's bad. All right, so let's move on to our next segment. <laughs> if you guys horrible. like this show, please like, subscribe, uh, comment below. Please leave an Apple uh, podcast review. That helps us probably more than anything else. Besides maybe telling a friend, tell a friend. Uh, that would also help us out. You know, spread the word. We're trying to grow the show. Or Patreon. Um as I said before, oh yeah, Patreon, yes. And also, if you want to help keep the lights on directly, go to patreon.com. Uh, go ahead and pledge a dollar, two dollars, whatever it is that you can afford to yeah, give if, away. If you can't, if you can't go to Patreon and pledge, we totally get it. Like, absolutely, you know, you can help in a lot of other yeah. ways if that's your prerogative. If you yeah. want to just listen to the show, that's cool too. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, we appreciate that. Um, that being said, for those who do pledge, there's plenty of bonus content there. We've said it a million times a show. I'll just go through a quick checklist. We got themed campaign adventures. We got original soundtracks from our Super Quest saga. We have early episodes. We have show notes. Um, we have merchandise. Oh yeah, you put all the character sheets we've ever made on. Yeah, there all too. the character sheets I've ever made for the sh- or we've ever made for the show are on there. Speaking of merchandise, everyone listening who's part of the twenty dollars or up tier, um, your new custom item is coming. Uh, oh, we're, yeah, we're getting we're art middle, done right now. We're getting art done right now. Um, it usually switches in October, November. It might be a little late. Huh? October is the month that we usually switch it over. It's not going to be another mug, I promise. Even though the last three mugs were dope, we got to switch it up. And I yeah, got we got a really cool months. idea. We'll tell you more about it later. Um, but yeah, pledge if you can. You know, it helps us out. But if not, it's cool. Just spread the word. Um, that being said, For let's. people uh, that do pledge to us, indeed. we will pledge back to you. Indeed. In double. Well, I don't know. I'm not giving you guys money. You're giving us money, which is dope. Thanks. Indeed. Um, we're doing a lot of cool stuff with it. So. But you're going to get shout outs. Yeah. Right that's now. Part of, the, part of the thing is you get a shout outs. And here they go. <clears throat> Zach Gifford. Thank you, Zach. Thank you, Zach. Orbital. Thank you, Orbital. Kogo Saiyajin. Can, can, can you say that again? Kogo Saiyajin? Sci- like Saiyan? Like, they say Saiyajin in, um, where is it? You know, the. the Kogo the, Saiyajin. The, Thank you. In the native, in the native. I see it. I see Japan. it. I see it. Uh, we got June Scorch. Thank you, June Scorch. Man, June Scorch. I don't miss the thing you remind me of, which is the heat. Indeed. Finally, cool in here. In here. Uh, we got Tynan Cameron. Thank you, Tynan. <laughs> uh, Idaliz Diaz. Thank you, Idaliz. Do you think it's Idaliz? I think it's Idaliz. Idaliz. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you. And we got J- uh, Jacob Powell. Who I'm sure I've shouted out before, but maybe Thank not. Thank you again, Jacob. Sometimes I see the email come in. I'm like, hey, a Jacob Powell. And then I do this. And I'm like, hey, I remember. It doubles I rem- up. Yeah. It's kind of almost like a deja vu effect. We uh, we have a winner for a contest that I'm seeing here. So we should announce on Oh, Insta- is that our coffee contest? On Instagram. Go yeah. ahead and shout them out. You want on the gram, Orange Time Machines Care. Thank you, Orange Time Machines Care. And or I hope you enjoy. Machines Care. Either or, I hope you enjoy that <laughs> coffee very much. I'm sorry, one of those is correct. We're it giving has to be. we're giving away three more bags of coffee. Yeah, uh, at hit the end up of every one of these weeks. Adventures Coffee Company is giving away coffee through us. Indeed. So thanks, Adventures Coffee Company. Thank uh, you, they Adventures have Coffee Company. Themed coffee, and we're giving away through the spooky month. So you know, like we said at the top. But thanks a lot for listening, you guys. I love you. I love you as well. I think we could call it a game. Talk Bye. to you guys later. Dungeon Cast.